Welcome to Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport and another video. Today we will be traveling up to New York City on Amtrak. Unfortunately there is no direct metro line to Union Station from the airport. But luckily I can just take the metro one stop to Crystal City and jump on Virginia Railway Express one of the two commuter agencies that goes into Washington Union Station. Virginia Railway Express isn't a very big operation. They usually only operate trains into Washington, D.C. in the morning and then out to the suburbs of Virginia in the evening. Luckily, I was heading over to Union Station in the early morning hours, so service was available into Washington Union Station directly. Virginia Railway Express utilizes these gallery cars, which you can also find on Metra in Chicago and Caltrains in California. From Crystal City, it's only about a 10 minute ride into Washington Union Station. Virginia Railway Express trains arrive on the lower through tracks. Today's Vermonter will depart from the upper level stub end tracks. For Amtrak's 50th anniversary celebration, this wall was put up to commemorate some of the many momentous things that Amtrak has accomplished over their 50 year history, including the very train that we're riding today. Amtrak's Vermonter. The Vermonter service was introduced on April 1st, 1995 and replaced the overnight train, the Montrealer, over the same route. And bringing daytime train service to Vermont for the first time in over 20 years. That brings us to today for a ride on board Amtrak 56. Only there's one issue. It's only going to New York. Let me explain. When the pandemic shut down the world in March 2020, the state of Vermont was placed into a state of emergency by Governor Phil Scott. This negated the necessary funding to operate the train north of New Haven. However, the Vermonter operates in an important mid-morning time slot. So rather than rebrand the train as a Northeast Regional, the Vermonter name was retained. Today's train features a seven car set with five coach class cars, one business class car, and a cafe car. In the descriptions of each car, you'll notice all the different variations the particular cars have been through in 40 plus years of operation. Let me know if you want to see more of this in future videos by leaving a comment down below. Amtrak just placed a huge order with Siemens to replace these aging Amfleet cars. I think it's important to document the history of these cars prior to their departure and really their importance to Amtrak over the last 40 plus years. These two cars in the middle of the train, Coach Cars 82733 and Cafe 43370, share an interesting tidbit of history. On the 5th of February 2001, they were both in the train set of Amtrak Empire Service Train 286. On that fateful day, the train that these cars were a part of rear-ended a CSX freight train. Everyone survived the crash, but extensive damage was done to the equipment, including the two amplitudes on this train today. Today's trip will cover 226 miles, take 3 hours 21 minutes, making 8 station stops. The full trip from Washington, D.C. to St. Albans, Vermont covers 609 miles and takes just under 13 hours. This is one of the longer routes to utilize these higher density Amfleet 1 coaches. 
Do you think Amtrak needs to utilize the lower density Amfleet 2 coaches for the passenger traveling the longer distance on this trip? Amtrak currently has about two dozen lower density Amfleet 2 coaches in storage currently that could improve passenger comfort on some of these longer routes. Powering this train today is a Siemens ACS-64 electric locomotive, which Amtrak started acquiring in 2013 to replace the evening fleet of AEM-7 and HHP-8 locomotives. Today we will be riding in the first car, Amfleet 1 Coach Class 82687. This car seats 72 people in a 2-2 configuration. So let's take a look at the seats. These cars now feature leather seating. Each seat features a tray table and a seat back pocket. And there are two power outlets. So the person on the outside gets to really get to know the person next to them. These cars feature a reasonable amount of leg room for a three to four hour trip, but anything over that, it starts to feel a little bit cramped. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison between the Amfleet 1 Coach Class and the Amfleet 1 Business Class, which are both available on the Vermonter. Amfleet 1 Business Class cars have 60 seats in them compared to the 72 in a regular coach class car which offers a little bit extra leg room and just a little added comfort on a longer trip. In a future video I'll take a deeper dive into the different Amfleet 1 business class options currently available. Now sit back and enjoy some of the sights and sounds of a trip on board the Amtrak Vermonter. When track work is being performed, bridge plates are utilized to enable trains to stop at any affected stations. Amtrak has converted these old maintenance gondola cars to perform as bridge plates. Not only is it neat, but it's also very efficient. Just after leaving Baltimore, we passed the Norfolk Southern Bayview Yard. Today we're passing a Norfolk Southern coal train. Looks like it just started up out of the yard. 
It'll go towards Perryville, then it'll hug the Susquehanna River up to Harrisburg. Outside of short local freight jobs, seeing mainline freight trains on Amtrak's Northeast Corridor, especially during the daytime hours, is incredibly rare. Working these long, heavy, and slow freight trains into Amtrak's high-speed Northeast Corridor is incredibly difficult. Train dispatchers have the difficult task of navigating these trains into specific time slots that will not affect passenger train movement. This is one of the few portions of railroad in the United States that Amtrak and all passenger trains have preference over freight traffic.